welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our balloon stencil, so let's go ahead and check it out. This balloon stencil has a bunch of different size balloons in different styles and shapes as well, and it has really cute balloon strings, a little bow, some shine marks, and some adorable confetti. So we're gonna go ahead and start stenciling these all so we can see what they look like. One of my favorite things with these balloons is the fact that there are so many sizes and I love overlapping them, which we'll be showing you in some of the cards that we're gonna be creating in just a little bit. But right now we're just gonna check out all of these cute balloons. And so we're gonna be using some fun pastel rainbow colors to ink these in. And here is that first balloon there. I love always picking up the stencil and seeing my cute design. And now we'll start inking the rest of these in. The star-shaped balloon I think is so sweet and I love mixing the different shapes and sizes together. And here you can see what that star-shaped balloon looks like. And you can see that we're using post-its to just mask off the edges of the stencil, especially if you're not a careful stenciler, a little post-it mask always does the trick. Now we have a smaller size in the round balloon, and then this is the heart-shaped balloon, which is so sweet. I love it on cards. I think it'd be really cute around Valentine's Day as well. And then here is the smallest of the round balloons. We'll use some blue for this one, and this one is just so super cute and tiny. We're going to be using that one a lot on the first card that we create. And then here is that kind of like standard balloon. I don't know what you would call this shape, but to me it's like that standard birthday balloon that you blow up out of the package where you have like 10 of them. And so we're going to add some ink to this one and you can see just how gorgeous that balloon is. So next we're going to work with the balloon strings and there are two different styles and sizes of them and we're going to be using that new Lost Shadow Distress Ink to do the balloons and I think that gray is just like the perfect light gray for the balloon strings. I also like doing the balloon strings in the same color or a lighter shade of the same color that I use for the balloon. That looks really really great too. You can also use the stencil as a little guide to draw with a pen for your lines and Shari's going to show you how to do that towards the end of the video. And now we're going to add a little string to that last balloon and you can see just how cute these look. Oh my goodness, absolutely adorable. The other really fun thing that's included in this set is there's a little bow and you can add it towards the top of the string or towards the bottom of the string. In this case, we're going to do it towards the top of the string there and you could add it to any of the styles of the balloon too. And we're gonna do that with a nice bright pink. And so it's just a little bit of inking just like that and you can lift it up and that's just a super cute detail too. The stencil also has some little shine marks that you can add to the balloons. And I love doing this in Yeti ink, which is a white pigment ink. And there's three different sizes of shine marks. I really like adding them to the round balloons, but you can actually add them to any of the shapes. And so we're just gonna pounce on that pigment ink and you can see just how cool that looks. And you can just layer it over your balloon and put that shine mark on either side, the right or left side, depending on what look you're going for on your card. Then last but not least, the stencil also has this really fun confetti, and we're gonna do the confetti all in one color, but later on in the video, we'll show you how we add it in multiple colors, but it's just a fun little party look for a card. I think it looks absolutely adorable. It's really pretty tone on tone as like a subtle background, or you could make the confetti the star of the show too. And then here is a look at what that looks like, and it's really easy to extend the confetti card on your design. So if you had like a slimline card, you could extend that confetti really easily by just lining it up and then inking up the stencil again and now you'll see just how cute this is gonna look. Now we're gonna start creating with this stencil and we're gonna start off by recreating a super cute card by Callie. And we're gonna be creating a lot of slimline cards in this fun video. So we're gonna take one of these scalloped slimline dies and we're gonna die cut that and then we're gonna die cut one of the rectangles that's going to fit in that scallop and that's the one that we're gonna be adding our decoration to. So we're gonna take that slimline piece and add it to this magnetic stencil station. You could also hold the stencil in place with some low tack tape like washi tape too. And we're gonna start layering these balloons into the sky. And so we're just gonna use some post-it note tape to protect the edges. You could also just be a more careful stenciler and you wouldn't necessarily need those post-its to protect the edges. We're gonna start off with some salvage patina ink and we're using these little finger brushes which are really fun for adding color to the balloons especially because they're smaller stencils images and I like using the little small brushes to do this. Then we can lift up the stencil and you can see this beautiful balloon and what Rebecca did there was she made sure some of the ink was heavier to one side and lighter towards the other and that gives the balloon a really dynamic look with only using one ink pad. So you can see there she's kind of focusing the ink right at the bottom of the balloon and it's lighter towards the top edge and that gives it that like translucent balloon look. 
For this next one, we're actually gonna overlap the balloons. And that's my favorite part of using this stencil is the overlapping look because when the colors overlap, it's a really, really neat look. I really wanna create a card where there's a rainbow of balloons in each one of them overlaps in rainbow order. I think that would be so pretty. Another really great thing to do with these balloons is to add them over the edge of the card. That makes it look like the balloons are really floating off the edge of the card and like the scene just keeps going. I really love this color combo that Callie used. I think it's really fun and it reminds me a lot of different things I had in the 90s. I'm pretty sure I had a windbreaker with these exact colors and I just think it's so fun. So now that we have all of our balloons on there, it's time to start adding the balloon strings. And on this card, instead of using the lighter gray color for the balloon strings, what we're gonna do is use colors to match the balloons. And I think that looks really, really pretty. You could even use contrasting colors too, depending on the look you want for your card. So here we're gonna add some more of the strings, just lining them up with the very bottom of the balloon and inking them up with that little finger brush. And now we'll just add our last one and add a little bit more of that turquoise colored ink. And now all of our balloons have balloon strings. So now we're gonna start working on the confetti. And to add individual color to all of these little confetti pieces, we're using this teeny tiny little brush. It kind of reminds me of like a dental instrument almost. And it's so small that you can go over all of the different colors. So we just kind of brush off the brush in between colors to make sure you get all of the pink off and then we can move on to the turquoise and fill in all of those different confetti. So the confetti looks really cute if you use all one color like we did earlier on in the video. You could also do kind of like a gradient of colors across the confetti, or you could use a teeny tiny little brush like this and fill in each one of those little confetti pieces with different colors. We used the same colors as the balloons and then brought in some yellow for kind of a little sparkle and shine. And because this is a slimline card, we're gonna continue this confetti stencil on down. So we're gonna line it up and continue adding confetti. Once again, bringing in that tiny little brush, the, the dental instrument one is what I always call it. That's how I remember which one it is. And we're gonna add in the color. And the nice thing is the color is already on the stencil from doing the other one. So it can help us remember which pieces were yellow, which are purple and which are pink, etc. Then to soften the edges, we're gonna bring in a nice light pink. And there's something about this that kind of brings the stenciling into the card and just gives a really pretty softer look because this is actually going to become a baby celebration card. So here we have our Henry Jr.'s ABC's stamp set. And I love alphabet stamp sets because they let you create custom sentiments. And in this case, we're going to spell out the word congrats. The other awesome thing about Henry Jr.'s ABC's and all of our ABC stamp sets is that they all have these little rectangular bases that you can butt up against each other and line them up on your block and it's going to create a perfectly spaced out and lined up word every single time. So as long as those rectangular bases line up, you know that your word is going to be perfect on the block. So we're just gonna bring in a couple of more letters and then we're gonna be able to stamp out the sentiment. Also, if you have a little one like I do, my son's almost three, he loves the alphabet stamps. So he's has so much fun with them. So we're gonna stamp that out in some black ink overlapping the balloons, which I think is a really, really cool look. And now we're gonna work on starting to layer these pieces. So we're gonna layer this stenciled piece over the scallop piece that we die cut earlier. And then we're gonna bring in one of my favorite sets ever, which is the Elephant Parade and Elephant Parade add-on and get a bunch of these images all stamped, colored, and die cut. And we're gonna add some foam squares behind these and layer them onto the cards. There's a little flag in the Elephant Parade stamp set that has all these different sentiments that you can stamp in it. So we decided to stamp, hello baby. And we're also bringing in some stamped and die cut balloons too, which I think really ties into the balloons that are in the background of this card. We have those cute little mice with the cupcakes and we're gonna add some hearts there into the card as well. And all we need to do now is just take a slimline card base and we're gonna layer that onto the back of the scallops, just kind of centering it between all of those scallops. And now this super cute card is done. That stencil background makes the card feel so special and unique. And I love the die cut images over top overlapping all of that stencil confetti and balloons. It's just so sweet and cute. For the next card, we are gonna make a portrait slimline card and we're also gonna be making it into a pull and pop card. So we're gonna die cut this with a stitched slimline rectangle die and then we're gonna work on a bunch of stenciling. And right now we are recreating a card by Maureen that was absolutely gorgeous. And Maureen's card was a standard card and we're gonna turn her card into an interactive card by bringing in the pull and pop die. But the first thing we're gonna do is work on some clouds. So this is the cloudy stencil and we're gonna use some tumble glass ink, which is a really nice light blue. We're gonna start on the stencil 
and then move on to the paper. And you'll see that as you do that, it's gonna create this really, really beautiful cloud. Now the really great thing about stenciling all of these clouds first is that as we stencil the balloons over them, you're gonna see the clouds through the balloons and you guys are gonna love how this looks. It's just so pretty. When I saw this on Marine's card, I just knew we had to do it for the video. So there you'll see the cloudy stencil has all different shapes and sizes of clouds. And so we're just switching between the different size to kind of switch up the different clouds on the slimline card and working our way down. And by switching up the angle and which side of the stencil you use, it gives you a really cool Cool, dynamic looking sky and the portrait style slimline card makes it just look amazing like the sky goes on forever. Now we're going to start stenciling those balloons on the card. We're having some of the balloons go off the edge of the card to create that nice continuous scene and you can see as we ink up the balloons you can see the clouds through the balloons and that's just what looks so incredible because it's this nice translucent balloon that you can see this fun beautiful cloud design through. So there we're gonna add the red one. Of course, the more bolder colors, you can't see the clouds as much, but on the lighter ones you can. And here's a good example of seeing those clouds. And as we add the balloons, we're overlapping them too, which I think really, really helps add to the design. These colors are also just so fun and bright, which is gonna be perfect for this birthday card design. So there you can see the clouds coming through and kind of changing color as we add the purple. And we're gonna continue on down the card. Once again, we're kind of overlapping those balloons, which helps tie them all together and bringing some colors back so that everything just kind of mixes and matches really nicely. Now we're gonna add a larger balloon towards the bottom. And the other cool thing we're gonna do with this card is we aren't gonna add any balloon strings. And that's okay too. That actually looks really incredible as well. And you'll see because we're gonna be layering so many stamped and die cut images over the top, you don't necessarily even always have to add the balloon strings either. Next up, we're gonna add another big pink balloon there to kind of balance out the big balloon that we have on the left-hand side. And then one more blue balloon is going to finish off this beautiful stenciled background that we're creating. And oh my gosh, I mean, how beautiful is that? It's just so pretty. I love it so much. It makes me so happy. I could just stare at this all day just like this, but it's time to make a card. So we're gonna take out the really high five stamp set, which is a stamp set that came out a couple years ago, but still one of my absolute favorites. And it has this really cute trampoline in it and these critters that can bounce on the trampoline and also critters that can kind of float up with balloons. And this bouncing bunny seemed like the perfect thing to use with the pull and pop pull tab interactive die. So we're gonna take the piece that creates the slots for you. We're gonna make sure that arrow is pointing down and we're gonna place it on our card where we want that bunny to jump. So you can see I kind of layered my stamped images earlier that helped me decide on the placement of this slot creating piece. Then the next thing we're going to do is actually die cut a rectangle with that same exact size rectangle as the main base piece. And then we're gonna cut that with a grassy border die because that grass is going to be part of what covers up our mechanism. Then here we have our main pull tab piece and we're also going to be die cutting the little stabilizer piece. But we want these pieces to be able to be kind of integrated into our design. So we're gonna take that same cloudy stencil and we're going to ink both the front and back of both of these pieces. So you'll see it's nice and quick and easy and this is gonna help blend them into our sky. Next, we're gonna start working with these interactive mechanism pieces. And we need to fold along these. So there's a fold tab at the very top. We're gonna to fold that one back. And then there's a fold line right in that long kind of T-shaped piece. And we're gonna use a ruler here to help us fold that line. So if you push up against the ruler, it just makes it easier to fold that delicate fold. And then you can go ahead and fold right along that and then use a bone folder to secure it so that the fold is nice and crisp. And if you've never made a pull and pop pull tab card, make sure to check out our intro video. We'll link it in the description below. The stabilizer piece also has some score lines. So we're gonna fold back on one of those lines and then we're gonna fold towards us on the other line, creating another Z type fold. Then next, we're gonna flip over our main panel piece with the balloons and we're gonna flip over that pull tab piece. And we're gonna feed the bottom part through the bottom slot and the top part through the top slot, just like that. And then when you get through those little tabs, you're just gonna push those through and then we can flip the whole thing over to the front. And it's that easy to add the pull tab to your mechanism. The next thing that we need to do is we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive below one of the score lines there on that little Z-shaped piece that we folded earlier. We're gonna make sure the pull tab is pushed all the way to the top, and then we're just gonna to attach that piece right above the slot, just like that. 
then we can push it down. We'll add some more adhesive onto that little tab there, and then we can push down the other tab, and that's gonna secure the whole thing in place. Now this is our grass piece that we die cut earlier. We need to cut a little notch so that it's easier to pull the pull tab. This little notch creating piece is so easy to do because all you do is just line it up, make sure those little arrows line up with your pull tab, and you just hold it in place with some low tack tape and then run it through the die cut machine and you'll see that's gonna cut a cute little notch that has that beautiful stitch detail and it's gonna end up lining up perfectly with your pull tab without having to make any kind of pencil lines or anything like that. There's also a decorative piece for the pull tab and we're gonna die cut that with that same cilantro cardstock so that everything coordinates well together. To create the length for that piece, what you need to first do is actually trim off the excess part of the pull tab. It's nice and long so that you can add this pull tab to all different locations on your card. And then we're gonna pull the pull tab piece out all the way. And then we're gonna line up our decorative piece with the bottom. And then we're just gonna make a pencil line in the middle there between those two slots. It just kinda eyeball it, doesn't have to be perfect. And then we just take our scissors and just trim that off. And that's gonna give us the perfect size pull tab piece. Then we can add some adhesive to this. And then what we're gonna do is just tuck it right into the slot just like that and just push it in until the bottom parts line up. And what's great about this is not only does it add stability to the pull tab, it gives a decoration and a nice little arrow that's gonna let the recipient know what to do when they get the card. Then we're gonna add some adhesive to that grass piece, being careful to not add any adhesive towards the center where our interactive pull tab is pulling. And then we can add that right on there and you'll see that it covers up the bottom slot, helping to bring this interactive mechanism into our card design. And as you pull the tab, you can see this piece start to move. But the next thing the mechanism needs is some stability so that that piece moves even more freely. So we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna be adding some tape runner to this piece and then we're gonna be adding that to just a plain piece of cardstock. So you'll see that we're adding adhesive all of the way around but we're making sure to avoid the mechanism so that it can still move nice and freely. Then we'll take the whole thing and we're just gonna add that plain piece of cardstock to the back. And once you add this, that mechanism has that nice stable base. And when you pull the tab, it's gonna move really, really well. And now you can see that right here. So cool. And it's ready to start adding our cute stamped critters on there. So here is that really high five stamp set again. We're gonna add our sentiment first, actually. It's much easier to stamp a sentiment before you start adding a bunch of stuff to your card. So we're gonna stamp that right at the top and it says flying by to say happy birthday, which is gonna be super cute with our balloons and our trampoline jumping bunny. And we're also gonna take some cute little grass pieces from the extraordinary Easter stamp set to help set our scene. The first thing we're gonna do is add that cute little buddy on to the pull tab mechanism. And then we can add the little trampoline right underneath him so it's gonna look like he's bouncing up and down off of the trampoline. We're also gonna layer some little stamped grass pieces around the trampoline, which I think just looks really, really cute. Then to help with our balloon theme, we're gonna add a bunch of stamped colored and die cut balloons in similar colors to the stenciled balloons that we have in the background. So we're gonna add some at the bottom here, like they're look kind of the balloons of the birthday party. And then we're gonna add some into the sky that these cute little critters are gonna be holding. And then we're also gonna add cute little party hats to everybody to help with our birthday theme. One of my other favorite things about Maureen's design for this card is that you'll see when she adds the little mouse, he, she has him upside down and his party hat is falling off. And I just think it's so cute and funny and just a fun little element to add to the card. And now you can see that bunny popping up and off of that trampoline. It is just so cute and sweet. The last step is to add this whole thing to a slimline card and I love that this slimline card is also an interactive card and you can put it in a business envelope with standard postage which is so cool. And then here is a look at the finished card and that little bunny jumping up and down. Oh my goodness, I mean how cute and sweet is that? It's just adorable and so sweet and it just makes me smile so big. And if you love pull and pop cards, the cool thing is is next up Shari is going to be creating one that's really really awesome with a ton of stenciling and a really cool flying balloon. So take it away Shari. So I'm creating a pull and pop pull tab card and I'm starting out with a base piece cut from some speckled eggshell cardstock. I'm going to be using this outside in stitched 
balloon stackable as my centerpiece that pops up. So I'm just figuring out the placement of my two slots for the pull in pop mechanism. So I've centered that up and I'm cutting that out of my panel. I have a second panel here that I'm going to be cutting some stitched cloud border from. And I'm cutting it high enough to where it's going to cover up that bottom slot and I actually cut it a little taller than it needs to be. So I'm just figuring out where I want it to be and I'll trim down that panel that goes on the front. So I've just drawn myself a guideline by tracing the back and I'll just trim this down a little bit. And that's going to go along the bottom and cover up the slot. And I'm going to be doing some stenciling on this whole piece. So my stenciling is going to go from that background panel onto that cloudy border at the bottom so that it looks all like one stenciled piece. I've put this onto my Make Art Station with a little bit of removable adhesive. And here are the colors I'm going to be using for my balloons in the background. So I decided I would start out with that light color, which is the yellow, and all my star-shaped balloons are going to be in the yellow. And this is, this is stenciling at super speed. <laughs> so I'm masking off where I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally go into the other balloon shapes. And I'm stenciling my yellow stars and I will add a few more stars here towards the end, but I'm just kind of working my way around and making sure I have a couple balloons of each color and I like their placement. I'm moving on to some merman ink for this big teal balloon. And then this is where I realized I really need to make sure that I've got my bottom panel in here as I'm stenciling. So the balloon I'm going to stencil now is just going to be on that bottom panel. But you're going to see me take this and realign the star that's on that left side and stencil the bottom half of the star over onto that cloudy border. So now when these two pieces are together, you're going to see one whole balloon. I'm moving on to some purple now, and I did about two balloons in each color before I started adding in more. I'm using some grape jelly ink for my purple balloons. And I did finally adhere down that piece at the bottom just with some removable adhesive so that it doesn't shift around as I do my stenciling. The large balloon is just there for placement so I can see how all these other balloons kind of look around it. And then I'm going back to that first star and making sure that one little corner that crosses over that cloud border is there. Now for my fourth color for my background balloons, I'm going to go with green. So I was going to do all rainbow balloons everywhere, but what I found when I did my first panel is that it looked a lot better when I just picked a few colors for the background. And then I'm going to let my big balloon in the middle, that's going to be the balloon that moves, be a different color. So I decided to go with basically all the cool colors and then also added in that yellow for the star balloons. So here is my second green balloon. So now I have two of every color. And then I'm going in with that little tiny balloon to kind of start to fill in. And I'm going to use the Forget Me Not ink. And you can see that I'm constantly putting that big balloon back on there just for placement to see if I like the way that it looks. I thought that it needed a little bit more around that balloon. It felt like it was kind of bare. So I went back to my star and thought this would be best as a lighter color. So you're going to see me add two more stars to this background. And then I'm going to add one more up towards the top, going off the top of the panel. 
Now I thought this was looking pretty good and nicely evenly spaced around the balloon in the center, but what I realized was when that balloon is popped up with the pull tab, it's kind of empty underneath it. So I'm adding one more little small balloon that you'll see when that big balloon pops up. Now to add the confetti. I like the confetti on this stencil. I think it's really fun. And I decided to go in with some carrot ink for the confetti. So eventually I will have all the colors of the rainbow on this card, just not all as balloons. So I did the whole stripe of confetti across the top and then you can see that I am masking off and moving it around to only do small portions of it across some of the other parts of the card. And this just has that nice confetti fill without filling the whole background with confetti. Now for the big balloon in the middle, I could have cut this out of some colored cardstock, but I wanted it to match the other stenciled balloons. So I'm adding some bubblegum ink to my die cut from that speckled eggshell cardstock. And then instead of stenciling the strings, I thought it would be fun to just trace them and nice and quick to do as well. So I'm just lining them up with the bottoms of the balloons and tracing it with a purple pin. I have two strings to choose from, so I'm just varying which one I use. And I like that I can kind of shift it this way and that and make the strings go in different directions. And then for this last string, it does overlap the slot and I kind of wish I had stopped it at the slot. And you'll see why towards the end of the video. Now for the big balloon, this is where my sentiment's going to go. So I've pulled out the Magic Messages sentiment set and that fits inside this balloon perfectly. So I'm just going to stamp that Happy Birthday sentiment right in the middle of this balloon. Now I can work on the mechanism for my pull and pop pull tab. I'm using my ruler to fold on that little score line and once I get it going, I can reinforce that. Then I'm going to fold the other direction on that other score line, making a Z fold, and do the same for the little stabilizer piece. Now to thread the tab through the panel, you wanna flip the panel over, make sure your adhesive from where you had it stuck to the mat for stenciling is gone, which is what I'm doing here, and flip the tab over as well. Thread the bottom tab through the bottom slot, the top through the top, and then maneuver it so that little T piece goes through the slot as well towards the front. You can see how that's going to pivot in those slots. Then you can make sure it's nice and straight and adhere your stabilizer piece. So you want to glue the little tab that is folded towards you right above the slot onto that background piece and then fold it down, fold the tab that's folded away from you back, and that's where you're going to put the adhesive for the big piece. Now the adhesive on the back of the panel needs to go at the top, the bottom, and just a little bit on the sides, not the whole side, because you want this panel to be able to have a little space behind it for that pivot point of the pull tab to move. So I've just put that double-sided adhesive tape on the top and the bottom and just a little bit up each side. I'm pulling off the liner paper and then I'm going to adhere this to my card base. So this panel is five and a half by four and a quarter. So it's going to completely cover this card base. You can see how that is going to move underneath that panel that's on the card base. Next, I'm going to add my little piece at the bottom that continues my seam to the bottom and covers up that bottom slot. I do need to cut a little notch so that I can grab the tab. So I'm using that bar that's on that die to line up with the bottom of my piece and the two little triangular pieces to line up with each side of the tab. Then I'm putting foam adhesive all over the back with the exception of the center where the tab is and placing this on my card. 
Now here is where I did mess up a little bit. I should have put my little decorative piece you can see in the top left corner. I needed to put that on here before I adhered this piece at the bottom. So I will show you kind of how I worked around that, but this is when I realized that it's really hard to slide this up into that other slot when you can't see it. <laughs> and I contemplated cutting, pulling this off and I just decided I would do something different. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off that long tab. And you don't have to use the decorative piece, but I did want a contrasting color down at the bottom and that little arrow to let you know that you should pull the tab. I'm going ahead and putting my balloon on there. And this was before I was really sure what I wanted to do with that bottom piece. So you can see how it's very plain. I decided I wanted it pink, just like the balloon. So I'm just ink blending the very bottom. And since I know that I cannot maneuver it up into that slot because I covered it up before I was ready, I'm just going to basically make a little decorative piece to go at the bottom. So when you pull it out, you will see the rest of the tab is not pink, but it's kind of like those little decorative pieces that we have in other die sets that you fold around your pull tab. So hopefully I will get better at remembering to put my decorative tab on, but for now I think this was a good solution for this card. For embellishments on this card, I wanted to add a little more of that pink color. So I've cut some little hearts from Guava Cardstock and I'm just adding those sprinkled around and adding little dots of glue. I think these look really cute with all that confetti. And then of course, nothing is complete without a little bit of glitter. So I'm just picking some of the random confetti dots and adding just a little dot of glitter on top of the inking. Now there's also some little dies in those balloon stackables that cut the little bows that go at the bottom where you've tied your string. So I've cut one from some storm cloud cardstock and I'm just adding that to the bottom of my balloon with a little dot of glue, which I think finishes it off nicely. And then here is that finished card. But I realized when I pulled that tab that the string I had drawn for that star that's above it is cut off by the tab and it just looks like it's kind of hanging there. So I decided to take my pen and draw that line on up that tab so that it looks like it goes to my pink balloon at the top, which I think is a really good way of finishing that off and making it look like it belongs. So here is my finished card. When you pull that tab, that balloon floats up with that happy birthday sentiment. And I really do love this balloon stencil. I love how you can just fill the whole card with all these balloons and the ink overlaps and it looks like real balloons because the colors mix. Oh my goodness, this card is so sweet. I love all the overlapping balloons and that fun and awesome confetti. And then the interactive element makes it even more special. I just love it so much. And next up, we have some incredible cards by the design team. And this clean and simple card by Elise just makes me smile. I love how she layered her balloons, added confetti to the balloons, and added a nice bold sentiment. This card by Audrey is so unique. She used oxide inks over black cardstock to give almost like a glowing feel to this. And I love how she also die cut the happy birthday from this to create this really cool three dimensional design. And then here is the card by Maureen that inspired us to make ours. It's so beautiful with the stenciling that she has. And I love that it was a standard card, but we were easily able to add the pull and pop mechanism to this idea. And it is just so cute and sweet. This card by Lynette is so beautiful. I love all of the overlapping balloons and I love that she stuck to the red, oranges, and yellows. It's just so happy and bright. And then here, Letitia overlapped a ton of balloons and then she brought in the Fly High stamp set, which I think is such a cute addition to this balloon stencil. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with this stencil, so make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.